For the polynomial function, list all possible rational zeros, find all rational zeros, and then factor f of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we do is list all possible rational zeros. So for part a, okay, we need to determine what is p and then what is q. Well, p is 45. So that's plus or minus 45. For q, it's 15. So it's plus or minus 15. So what are all the factors of 45? Well, all the factors of 45 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5, plus or minus, actually plus or minus 3. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 15, and then plus or minus 45. Okay, now what are the possible factors of plus or minus 15? Well, that's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 15. So now we need to consider what are all the possibilities of this factor. So we need to first take this 1 and then divide it by each. So this 1 right here, we're going to take plus or minus 1, and then we're going to divide it by each value in the denominator. Okay. So what does that mean? That tells us what we have plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 3. Plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 5. Plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 15. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at the next value, which is plus or minus 3. So we're going to divide that by each number in a denominator. So we have plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 3. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 5 plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 15. Okay, so now we're going to now take a look at plus or minus 5. So we're going to take plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 1 plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 15. Okay, now we're going to take a look at plus or minus 9. So we have plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 5, plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 15. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at plus or minus 15. So we have plus or minus 15 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 15, divided by plus or minus 3, plus or minus 15, divided by plus or minus 5, plus or minus 15, divided by plus or minus 15. Okay, then the last one is we have plus or minus 45. So we have plus or minus 45, divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 45 divided by plus or minus 3, plus or minus 45 divided by 
plus or minus 9, plus or minus 45, not 5, excuse me, that should be 5. We'll change that there. That should be a plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 45 divided by plus or minus 15. So now we're going to figure out how many is repeated so we don't need to do this again. So when you take plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1, that's going to give us plus or minus 1. This plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 3 is plus or minus 1 third. This plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 5 is plus or minus 1 fifth. This plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 15 is plus or minus 1 over 15. And then we have plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1, which is plus or minus 3. Okay, this plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 3 is already here. So you can see, and I'm going to show you here, that that equals 1. So we don't need to do that again. So we're going to leave that alone. Okay, then the next one is plus or minus 3 over 5. So we have plus or minus 3 fifths. And the next one is plus or minus 3 over plus or minus 15. Well, this reduces to plus or minus 1 fifth. Okay, which again is already repeated in our problem. So plus or minus 1 fifth is already here. So we don't need to rewrite that one. Okay, the next one here is plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 1. So that's plus or minus 5. Plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 3. So that's plus or minus 5 over 3. Plus or minus 5 divided by plus or minus 5 is 1. So we don't need to include that. Okay, and then what do we know about plus or minus 5 over 15? Well, that's the same thing as plus or minus 1 third if you reduce that. And we've already included that here, so we're not going to repeat that. So therefore, that is now repeated, so we don't have to do that because it's already included. And we have plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 1. So that's plus or minus 9. Plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 3 is plus or minus 3. And again, we've already included that. And that was here. And then we have plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 5. So that's plus or minus 9 fifths. Okay, and then we have plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 15. Well, this is reduced to plus or minus 3 fifths. And again, that's already repeated. So we already know that that's included from here. Okay, we're going to continue. So we have plus or minus 15 divided by plus or minus 1, so that's plus or minus 15. Plus or minus 15 divided by plus or minus 3 is plus or minus 5. So therefore, we know that that's already included here. Plus or minus 15 divided by plus or minus 5 is plus or minus 3. So again, we don't need to repeat that. So we know that that's already included at plus or minus 3 over 1. Plus or minus 15 divided by plus or minus 15 is 1. We already have that. And then we have plus or minus 45 over 1. So that's plus or minus 45. 
Okay, plus or minus 45 divided by plus or minus 3 is plus or minus 15. And we repeated that. Plus or minus 5, 45 over plus or minus 5 is plus or minus 9. And then plus or minus 45 over the plus or minus 15 is plus or minus 3. So therefore, we can see that those are also included. So we'll go ahead and highlight that. So that, that, and that. So therefore, everything that's not highlighted is going to be considered our rational zeros. So let's take a look and make sure that that matches. Okay, so we're going to look at our answers. Okay, so which one does this represent? So this one, the first one here, Okay, so if you notice here, this doesn't include 45, so it's not A. Okay, and these ones don't have plus or minus, and neither does this one. And so this one does include plus or minus 45, and therefore that is our answer. Okay, so now let's go ahead and continue. Okay, now we want to determine what are all the rational zeros for this function. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to go ahead and graph this just to figure out how this is going to look. So we have 15x cubed minus 157x squared plus 193x plus 45. Okay, so let's see here. We have... A zero here, a zero here, and a zero there. Okay, so let's figure that out. So in this particular problem, you can see that we have these zeros. So this is a zero, this is a zero, and this is a zero, right? But the other two zeros are in decimal form. So what we're going to do for part B is use the one that we know, which is 9. So we're going to first start out by looking at 9 as a 0. And then we're going to go ahead and then figure out what our values are. So we have 9, 15, negative 157, 193, and then we have 45. Okay, so what we're going to do now is bring down the 15. And then we're going to say, okay, well, what's 9 times 15? 9 times 15 is 135. Negative 157 plus 135 gives us negative 22. Negative 22 times 9 gives us negative 198. 193 minus 198 is negative 5. And 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. And therefore, that gives us a 0 as a remainder. So we know that 9 is a 0. And that tells us that x minus 9 is a factor. Okay, now let's go to the next step. Since we know that x minus 9 is a factor, then we know that this is cubed, so this is 15x squared minus 22x minus 5. So that gives us x minus 9 times 15x squared minus 22x minus 5. Okay, so now what we can do is we can factor this. And one way of factoring this is by using the AC method. So in order to factor that, we know what AC is. AC is taken 15, multiplying that by negative 5, which gives us negative 75. Step 2, we have negative 75 with the number here is negative 22. So what two numbers can we multiply to get negative 75? We have a positive 3 and a negative 25. And so therefore, we can factor this to look like the following. We have 15x squared plus 3x 
minus 25x minus 5, and then we're going to factor by grouping. So what can we factor out of the first two terms is a 3x, and then what's left is 5x plus 1, which means we're going to get 5x plus 1 over here. And then what do we have to multiply by 5x to get negative 25x, and that's negative 5. So this factors to be 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 5. So over here, we know that we have x minus 9 times 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 5 and we can set that equal to zero to find the zeros of the function. So we have x minus 9 equals zero, 5x plus 1 equals zero, or 3x minus 5 equals zero. Over here, x is going to equal positive 9. If we subtract 1 to both sides, 5x is equal to negative 1. Divide both sides by 5, x is equal to negative 1 fifth. And that's an or, and then or here, we're going to add 5 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 3, and so therefore x is going to equal 5 thirds. So therefore the zeros of this function are going to be 1 fifth, negative 1 fifth, 5 thirds, and 9. And therefore negative 1 fifth is actually negative 0 0.2. 5 thirds is actually 1.667, and there we have 9, so let's go ahead and answer this question. So we have negative 9, it's positive 9, negative 1 fifth, and then 5 thirds, and there is our answer. Okay, and then how do we write it in factored form? Well, we saw what it looks like in factored form, so in part C, we have x minus 9 times 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 5. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So we have x minus 9 times 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 5 check our answer and there is our result.